Hi everyone, it's Lauren Menarji with Breezeway Productions and we're here at the fourth annual Women in Entertainment Summit. We're about to talk to some incredible women in the entertainment business, so just keep watching. So Noelle, tell me a little bit about what you do and what your role is here today because we are surrounded by amazing women who are killing it in the entertainment business. So tell me a little bit about your story. Sure. Yeah. Um, I am Noelle Stevenson. I'm the executive producer on She-Ra and the Princesses of Power. Um, so I'm the showrunner. Um, and essentially, every part of the show, I, I pitched the show, I developed the show, and um, I work with our incredible crew to uh, execute the show. Um, and so every part of the process at some point um, goes past me. Uh, but it's also, you know, we have just such an amazing crew working on this that it's they, uh, they make it easy. <laughs> yeah, well, you wear a lot of hats, it sounds like so what would you tell someone who wants to be in your shoes you know a young graduate that wants to work in entertainment what would you say to do maybe like some of the steps that you took mm -hmm. in your career uh yeah I, I think that um so much of it is about finding the stories that are that are genuine, that um, that feel real to you, and finding a place for those in the world instead of trying to change your own stories to fit what you think people want to see. Mm -hmm. I think that that is that can be sometimes hard to learn, and it can be hard to even identify. You know, it's hard to maybe keep your center when you're not sure if you're getting a lot of feedback that like, oh, people want to see this, people want to see that. Yeah. Especially as a woman, especially working with female characters or with other female creatives. Um, they can there can be a lot of hoops to jump through but I think uh, especially like starting out it's you, there's an incredible opportunity to just make establish your own voice and just tell the stories that you care about and don't try and make the thing that you think people want to see make what feels real to you and even if it seems like there's not an audience for you I think that you'll be surprised. All right, so Veronica, tell me a little bit about, you said that you came from a law background. Yes, I am yeah. a lawyer by training, okay. and I then became a business affair executive at first at Paramount, uh, Viacom, wow. and then eventually did the Walt Disney Company, and then 15 years ago, I came um, to work with the Mark Gordon Company, uh, which as a COO of the Mark Gordon Company, run by Mark Gordon, <laughs> obviously, and uh, we've eventually sold, uh, we had, you know, a big um, deal at ABC, Mark created uh, with Shonda Grey's Anatomy, with Jeff Davis he created Criminal Minds, and he had a very successful um, career, and then we took all that and we turned it into an independent studio and we sold our company in two tranches, but the last uh, transaction was just in March for a total of $350 million, wow. so it was a very nice uh, company that we had built and Mark had built and yeah. when I had helped build, so. Just, you know, some small companies that you've worked <laughs> for, nothing big, right? How do you make that switch? What kind of led you to say, okay, I think I want to work in entertainment now? Oh, um, it's actually a funny thing. I never wanted to work in entertainment. I wanted to be a civil rights lawyer. Okay. I needed to make more money than that because I had three boys. And I was at this law firm and I was working 24 hours a day. And uh, in LA, it's kind of unavoidable. If you want to go in-house, you end up in entertainment. Yeah. And then I loved it. And I uh, and it's sort of, I came to it by chance, but I ended up enjoying very much. And I like the idea of taking artists and their vision yeah. and helping them make it into a, a, a real thing, right? Yeah. And so that's in enabling that creative process mm -hmm. and making it concrete is a very exciting and yeah. just like wonderful process. Yeah. You, know? you really get to see it from the ground up and then yeah. all of a sudden you're watching your friends and family watch the shows <laughs> and it's like, oh, I was a part of that. That's true. That's true. And I was very proud of like the a very good fortune, right? To work with people that cared about the quality of their work and yeah. You know, so that was yeah. great. So Kristen, you just spoke on stage and you know, you're with this amazing panel. Tell us a little bit about your involvement in the Women in Entertainment Summit and kind of what your role has been in entertainment. Um, well, I'm um, a producer at Churn and Entertainment. Um, I'm the executive vice president of TV over there, and this is my first year um, I'm around these wonderful women at the panel. And it was really interesting, too, even before the panel, to just hear a little bit about everybody and where they came from and how they started and what's important to them and what they're fighting for. And I think um, on the panel today, we could have gone on for hours and just sort of talking about everything that's going on. I think you're so... in 
I think you're so zoned in into what you do every day, whether it's producing a show or taking shows out to develop and sell, that you you it's just been really great to hear and meet all these wonderful women and kind of get different experiences. Yeah, there's so many different angles, and yeah. you know everyone is dealing with different issues, but also the same thing at the same yeah. time. Yeah. So tell us a little bit about how you started and how you got to where you are now. Um, I started in the mail room at a talent agency um, a like long so time ago. Start, where so right? many start. Yeah. It was a different, a very different. You moved to Los Angeles. I moved to Los Angeles. I went to school in Santa Barbara. Okay. Moved to Los Angeles two days after I graduated and started in the mail room okay. at um, now it's Endeavor Con or no. WME, sorry, WME, yeah. WB, yeah. and it used to be Endeavor. Right. Um, and um, from there, I started on the show The OC, um, oh my gosh. working, One of my so <laughs> working good. as an assistant to yeah. the uh, executive producer Josh Schwartz. And there, I got to learn so much about production, what yeah. goes into drafts and scripts yeah. and and running a show and all the different entities involved in that. I was with him for the front of the season for four, I'm sorry, for the front of the series, four seasons. Wow. So I saw the show go you from, yeah. I saw it all from like wardrobe choices yeah. to casting. Um, and then from there, I was offered a job as a manager of development and television at sort of a more startup company. Mm -hmm. um, it was called Sonar Entertainment mm -hmm. at the time, not currently so in our here, yeah, but um, it was an offshoot of Radar Pictures, which yeah. they primarily did feature films. Mm -hmm. And so I was there for about a year, sold some projects, and then um, moved to a company called Fuse Entertainment, which then changed its name to Fabrique Entertainment, and was there for the run of 10 years. Wow. And we did over 10 shows. We did Burn Notice, to The Killing, mm -hmm. to The Comedians, to American Odyssey that was on NBC, wow. and um, many other Bosch um, the Harry yeah. Bosch series on Amazon, yeah. and then about two years ago, I started. I came over to um, help run Churn in Television, and so I've been there for two years. And so far, we have two shows that are currently in production for Apple, wow. and about 15 or 20 other things set up at various networks. Wow. And so. so you've always stayed on the development side, is that right? Yes, wow. I've never been on the buyer side. Yeah. I love putting everything together. I love yeah. meeting with writers, hearing their ideas, finding yeah. books and articles, yeah. and putting writers that I'm really passionate about together with ideas that, that could be really great for television and then putting all the pieces together. And so we sort of start by selling the, the concept or the idea uh, to networks and then the writer writes the draft and pending on like how well it's received, mm -hmm. um, they make the show. Yeah. And so you're with it for the whole run. That's really cool. So yeah. you really see it from start to finish, yes. <laughs> the whole thing. From preparing yeah. the pitch yeah. to um, to everything. So yeah, helping shape the characters. So I am a television writer, creator, showrunner, and I have a show on Facebook Watch called The Sacred Lives of Minnow Bly. Um, it's kind of crazy how shows are now going on social media. Mm -hmm. It's really taken a turn. How did you choose that platform? The platform chose me. So I wrote a project that was really outside the box. Mm -hmm. It's about a 17-year-old girl who escapes a cult and has no hands mm -hmm. and ends up in juvenile detention. And it was a passion project of mine, and I couldn't get anybody in the business to touch it for three years. Wow. And Facebook Watch came in and said, you know what, we're going to make the show, and we're going to let you, we're basically going to let you make the show you want to make. And wow. kind of, we're pretty hands off and in unbelievably support. Wow. Their interest was in creating a dialogue about these really important issues that were featured in the show, like the incarceration of children in our country, like living with disabilities and, you know, racism. And there were, there, it's a very heady um, show, despite the fact that it's a fairy tale and a murder mystery. Mm -hmm. And they saw the potential that on Facebook Watch, there would be a platform where people would really talk and dig into these really important topics. Right. So that's why they made the show. Yeah. And, uh, and so for me, it's been an incredible experience to make something that is reaching the public so directly mm -hmm. and the, where we can all sort of discuss it on a platform like that is something I've never done in my career. Wow. So th the Institute was started out of out of a very personal experience for Gina mm -hmm. and it really came first of all her awareness mm -hmm. of how her roles inspired and influenced women mm -hmm. but then when she became a mom and she was watching content with her young daughter she noticed that it was bereft of female presence right. and she thought that was so strange and that motivated her to actually get data to prove her point okay. and at that time over 12 years ago no one really thought about female presence on screen where we all know in the industry how dire it's been for women behind the camera. Right. 
So that is an area that we pioneered, gender and media on screen, and have been working towards, and I believe pretty successfully, yeah. for the past 12 years. Well, and now it's so relevant. Now is the time where everybody is talking about it, so this is the perfect time for you. How did you get involved, and how has that kind of blossomed in just retrospect now, looking at how important it is for women to be represented in media, how has that kind of helped the company? Well, I've always been in entertainment, and I was always very conscious of looking for ways to navigate my own career, and therefore, I would be an executive groupie. So while other people may be following celebrities, I was following and tracking executive careers, wow. and particularly of women yeah. who were in the entertainment industry wow. and navigating a path for themselves. Mm -hmm. So it's something that I always did. I had a big file, I was always clipping articles, and so it was a natural for me when I came to the decision that I wanted to use my power for good to think about, well, how do I take this entertainment career that I've had and how do I marry it with something that is more pro-social and put the two together? And I was just so fortunate that Gina found me and uh, asked me to join her and it's just been uh, the job of a lifetime. The barriers have definitely been broken yeah. down, you know. I think you really have access to your favorite talent mm -hmm. whenever you want that access and we, our talent does it to the extent that they're comfortable on their own social platforms mm -hmm. and then we create opportunities for our fans to engage with our talent, things like Facebook Lives and Instagram Lives and we're capturing a ton of behind the scenes content from all of our shows yeah. and so we, it's really important for fans have that connection with talent. I think there was a study a little while back and it was showing that the talent promoting a show on social was as or more important than the network promoting a show on social. And so uh, giving our talent content that they can post, but then working with them to find opportunities to engage with fans is also really important because um, that's just what the consumer expectation is now, that if you love a show, you're going to be able to tweet or um, in engage on Instagram with your favorite stars. And sometimes it can be a bummer when you love a star and they don't have a social presence and yeah. you want that, like you want to, you know, break the fourth wall and see what's happening and you don't get that experience. Yeah, I know. I've noticed that as well. Yeah. And for us, what we've done is that waited in line for the fan. Well, now we've made, you can meet your celebrity as a hologram. And the reason that that's been really important is you're unlikely to be able to serve a tennis ball to Roger Federer. You'd probably be arrested if you try to do that at the U.S. Open. Yeah. Or we're giving that fan an opportunity to do that. And then for the first time, where for a lot of brands, you know, they only have an hour of these, of these celebrities' times. Right. So we're creating these VIP experiences to offer. And it could be even funner where now a lot of brands, like, Actually, a lot of the celebrities or um, athletes we work with, they're like, I want to become a hologram just because it's something cool and new. Or it's playing with it, where they're talking to their own hologram. So it's kind of using the new technology to create new fan experiences that haven't been available before. Well, I'm a film producer, and I'm also a partner in a company called Resonate Entertainment. Resonate is a film company that makes commercial films that are for, by, and about women. They're female audience focused. They have dimensional female roles in it. And all my career, I've made movies like this. I started as a studio executive at 20th Century Fox. I made movies like The Truth About Cats and Dogs, Buffy the Vampire Slayer, Nell, um, <laughs> and, and on and on. Um, and I love movies that are about women because I want to see movies that are some reflection of my own experience in the world. And women are, you know, half of the population, and I would say we consume more television, so that's so important to do that. Well, there's even more. We're re more often repeat viewers. You know how we watch things yeah. medicinally, like for heartbreak or yeah. sadness, yeah. or or yeah. because we're happy or because we yeah. like something. We tend to see things uh, more often multiple times, right. and um, we're really avid consumers and we're great consumers of media. So many incredible speakers here at the Women in Entertainment Summit. Thank you guys so much for watching. I'm your host, Lauren, and this is Breezeway Productions.